Thank you, Father. Thank you. It's the Monday after Easter. And, and after all the attacks and all the all the things that people try to do to make yesterday a smaller day than what it actually is. You blessed us with a wonderful day. You allowed us to celebrate with each other. You opened the, the doors for baptisms and worship services all around the world. Many gave their lives to you yesterday. Even when so many are trying to take take that spirit away from us. We thank you, Father, for loving us the way you do. Father, we ask you to bless, bless us this morning, bless those that hear this, this message, bless those that participate. Let your words change people's hearts. Let the person that needs to hear this today, hear it. We thank you, Father, we lift you up in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Second Samuel chapter 10. Excuse me one minute, one second. Let me make sure this is silent. And it is. It is. Second Samuel chapter 10. It happened after this that the king of the people of Ammon died. And Hanan his son reigned in his place. Then David said, I will show kindness to Hanan the son of Nahash, and his father as his father showed me kindness. So David sent by the hand of his servants to comfort his concerning uh, him concerning his father. And David's servants came into the land of the Ammon. And the princes of the people of Ammon said to Hanan the Lord. Do you think that David really honors your father? Because he has sent comforters to you? Has David not rather sent his servants to you to search the city, to spy it out, and to overthrow it? Therefore, Hannah took David's servants, shaved off half of their beards, cut off their garments in the middle of their buttocks and sent them away. When they told David he had sent, he sent to meet them because the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, wait at Jericho until your beards have grown and then return. When the people of Ammon saw that they had made themselves repulsive and, uh, to David, the people of Ammon sent and hired the Syrians of Beth Rehab and the Syrians of Zobah 20,000 foot soldiers and and from Ishtab 12,000 men. Now when David heard it, he sent Joab and all the army of the mighty men. Then the people of Ammon came out and put themselves in battle array at the entrance of the gate, and the Syrians of Zobah, Beth, Rehab, Ishtab, and Mecca were by themselves in the field. When Job, when Joab saw that the battle line was against him before and behind, he chose some of Israel's best and put them in the battle array against the Syrians. And the rest of the people he put under the command of Abishai, his brother, that he might set them in battle array against the people of Ammon. Then he said, If the Syrians are too strong for me, then you shall help me. But if the people of Ammon are too strong for you, then I will come and help you. Be of good courage, and let us be strong for our people and for the cities of our God.
And may the Lord do what is good in his sight. So Joab and the people who were with him drew near for the battle against the Syrians. And they fled before him. When the people of Ammon saw that the Syrians were fleeing, they also fled before Abishai and entered the city. <clears throat> so Joab returned for, from the people of Ammon and went to Jerusalem. When the Syrians saw that they had been defeated by Israel, they gathered together. Then Hadadazer sent, sent and brought out the Syrians who were beyond the river, and they came to Helam. And Shobak, the commander of Hadadazer's army, went before them. When it was told David, he gathered all Israel, crossed over the Jordan, and came to Helam. And the Syrians set themselves in battle array against David and fought with him. Then the Syrians fled before Israel, and David killed 700 charioteers and 40,000 horsemen of the Syrians, and struck Shobak with the commander of their army who died there. And when all the kings who were servants of Hadadezer saw that they were defeated by Israel, they made peace with Israel and served them. So the Syrians were afraid to help the people of Ammon anymore. Second Samuel chapter 11. It happened in the spring of the year at the time when kings go out to battle that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel. And they destroyed the people of Ammon and desired, besieged Rabbah. But David remained at Jerusalem. Then it happened one evening that David arose from the, from his bed and walked on the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful to behold. So David sent and inquired about the woman. And someone said, Is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her, and she came in, and she came to him, and he lay with her. For she was cleansed from her impurity, and she returned to her house. And the woman conceived, and so she was, so she sent and told David, and said, "I am with child." Then David sent to Joab, saying, "Send me Uriah the Hittite." And Joab sent Uriah to David. When Uriah had come to him, David asked how Joab was doing and how the people were doing and how the war prospered. And David said to Uriah, go down to your house and wash your feet. So Uriah departed from the king's house and a gift of food for the, from the king followed him. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord and did not go down to his house. So when they told David, saying, Uriah did not go down to his house, David said to Uriah, Did you not come from a journey? Why did you not go down to your house? And Uriah said to David, The ark of Israel and Judah are dwelling in tents, and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are encamped in the open field. Shall I go then to my house and eat and drink and lie with my wife? As you live and as your soul lives, I will not do this thing. Then David said to Uriah, wait here today also, and remember, I will let you depart. So Uriah remained in Jerusalem that day and the next. Now when David called him, he ate and drank before him, and he made him drunk. And at evening he went out to lie on his bed with a servant of his lord. But he did not go down to his house. In the morning it happened that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter saying, Sent, Set Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle and retreat from him so that he may be struck down and die. So it was while Joab besieged the city that he assigned Uriah to a place where he knew there were valiant men. Then the men of the city came out and fought with Joab. 
And some of the people of the servants of David fell, and Uriah the Hittite died also. Then Joab sent and told David all the things concerning the war, and charged the messenger, saying, When you have finished telling the matters of the war to the king, if it happens that the king's wrath rises, and he says to you, Why did you approach so near to the city when you fought? Did you not know that they would shoot from the wall? Who struck Abimelech, the son of Jerubasheth? Was it not a woman who cast a piece of a millstone on him from the wall so that he died in the in the bez? Why did you go near the wall? Then you shall say, your servant Uriah Hittite, the Hittite, is also dead. So the messenger went and came to David and told him, and told David all that Joab has said by him. And the messenger said to David, Surely the men prevailed against us and came out of, uh, to us in the field. And then we drove them back as far as the entrance to the gate. The archers shot from the wall all, at all your servants, and some of the king's servants are dead. And your servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. Then David said to the messenger, Thus you shall say to Joab, do not let this displease you, for the sword devours one as well as another. Strengthen your attack against the city and overthrow it, so encourage him. When the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she mourned for her husband. And she and when she, her mourning was over, David sent And brought her to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. Second Samuel chapter 12. Then the Lord sent Nathan to David, and he came to him and said to him, There were two men in one city, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceedingly many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing except one little ewe, ewe lamb, which he had brought and nourished, and it grew up together with him and his children. I It ate of his own food and drank from his own cup and lay in his bosom, and it was like a daughter to him. And a traveler came to the rich man, who refused to take from his own flock and from his own herd and pre to prepare one of the wayfaring men who had come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared it for the man who had come to him. So David's anger So David's anger was greatly aroused against the man, and he said to Nathan, As the Lord lives, the man who has done this shall surely die, and he shall restore fourfold for the lamb, because he did this thing and because he had no pity. Then Nathan said to David, You are the man. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel. I delivered you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your keeping and gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if that had been too little, I also would, would have given you much more. Why have you despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? You have killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and you have taken his wife to be your wife, and have killed him with the sword of the people of Ammon. Now therefore the shall shall depart, the sword shall depart from your house, because you have despised me, and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will rise up adversity against you from your own house, and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to the, your neighbor. And he shall be with, lie with your wives in the sight of, with the son. For you did it secretly. But I will do this thing before Israel, before the son. So David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, the Lord also has put away your sin. You shall not die. However, because of this deed, you have given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also who is born to you shall surely die. Then Nathan departed to his house.
And the Lord struck the child of Uriah's wife, bore to David, and it became ill. David therefore pleaded with, the, with God for the child, and David fasted and went in and lay all night on the ground. So the elders of his house rose and went to him to raise him up from the ground, but he would not, nor did he eat food with him. Then on the seventh day it came to pass that the child died, and the servants of David were afraid to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, Indeed, while the child was alive, we spoke to him, and he would not heed our voice. How can we tell him that the child is dead? How may, how may do he may do some harm? When David saw that his servants were whispering, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore, David said to his servants, Is the child dead? And they said, He is dead. So David arose from the ground, washed and anointed himself, and changed his clothes. And he went to the house of the Lord and worshipped. Then he went to his own house, and when he requested, they set food before him, and he ate. Then his servants said to him, Why is it that you have done? You fasted and wept for the child while he was alive, but when the child is dead, when the child died, you arose and ate food. And he said, While the child was alive, I, I fasted and wept, for I said, Who can tell whether the Lord will be gracious to me, that the child may live? But now he is dead. Why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. Then David comforted Bathsheba, his wife, and went into her and lay with her. And she bore a son, and he called his name Solomon. Now the Lord loved him, and he sent word by the hand of Nathan that the prophet, that, so he called his name Jedediah because of the Lord. Now Joah fought against Rabbi of the people of Ammon and took the royal city. And Joab sent messengers to David and said, I have fought against Rabbi and I have taken the city's water supply. Now therefore gather the rest of the people and together and encamp against the city and take it, lest I take the city and it be called after my name. So David gathered all the people together and went to Rabbah, fought against it, and took it. Then he took their king's crown from his head. It weighed it its weight was as its weight was a talent of gold with precious stones, and it was set on David's head. Also he fought out of he brought out the spoil of the city in great abundance. And he brought out to the people who were in it and put them to work with saws and iron picks and iron axes and made them cross over to the, to the brick works. So he did all the, he did to all the cities of the people of Ammon. Then David and the people and all the people returned to Israel. Second Samuel chapter 13. After this, Absalom, the son of David, had a lovely sister whose name was Tamar. And Ammon, the son of David, loved her. Amnon, Amnon, the son of David, loved her. Amnon was so distressed over his sister Tamar that he became six, for, he, for she was a virgin. And it was improper for Amnon to do anything to her. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Jon Jonadab, the son of Shimea, David's brother. Now, Jonadab was a very crafty man, and he said to him, Why are you, the king's son, becoming thinner day after day? Will you not tell me? Amnon said to him, I love Tamar, my, brother's, my brother Absalom's sister. So Jonadab said to him, Lie down on your bed and pretend to be ill, and when your father comes to see you, say to him, Please let my sister Tamar come and give me food and prepare the food in my sight that I may eat it and see it and eat it from her hand. Mm -hmm. Then Ammon, Amnon lay down and pretend to be ill. 
And when the king came to see him, Amnon said to the king, Please let Tamar, my sister, come and make a couple of cakes for me in my sight, that I may eat from her hand. And David sent home to Tamar, saying, Now go to your brother Amnon's house and prepare food for him. So Tamar went to her brother's house, and he was laying down. Then she took flour and kneaded it and made cakes in his sight and baked the cakes. And she took the pan and placed them out before him, but he refused to eat. Then Amnon said, have everyone go out from me. And they all went out from him. Then Amnon said to Tamar, bring the food into the bedroom that I may eat by your hand. And Tamar took the cakes which she had made and brought them to Amnon, her brother, in the bedroom. Now when she had brought them him to him to eat, he took hold of her and said to her, Come lie with me, my sister. But she answered him, No, my brother, do not force me, for no such thing should be done in Israel. Do not do this disgraceful thing, and I, where I could take you into my shame. And as for you, you would be like one of the fools in Israel. Now, therefore, please speak to the king, for he will not behold, withhold me from you. However, he would not heed her voice, and being stronger than she, he forced her to lay with him. The Namnon hated her exceedingly, so that the hatred which he hated her was greater than the love which he had loved her. And Amnon said to her, Arise and be gone. So she says to him, No, indeed, this evil of sending me away is worse than the other than you did to me. But he would not listen to her. Then he called his servant who attended him and said, Here, put this woman out away from me and bolt the door behind her. Now she had on a robe of many colors for the king's virgins, virgin daughters wore such apparel. And his servant put her out and bolted the door behind her. Then Tamar put ashes on her head and tore her robe of many colors that was on her. And she laid her hand on her head and went away crying bitterly. And Absalom, her brother, said to her, Has Amnon, your brother, been with you? But now hold your peace, my sister. He is your brother. Do not take this thing to heart. So Tamar, Tamar remained desolate in her brother's Absalom's house. But when King David heard of all these things, he was very angry. And Absalom spoke to his brother Amnon, neither good nor bad. For Absalom hated Amnon because he had forced his sister Tamar. And it came to pass after two full years that Absalom had sheep shares in Baal Hazar, which is near Ephraim, and Absalom invited all the king's sons. Then Absalom came to the king and said, Kindly know, your servant has sheep, sheep shearers. Please let me let the king and his servants go with your servant. But the king said to Absalom, No, my son, let us not all go now, lest we are a burden to you. Then he urged him, but he would not go, and he blessed him. Then Absalom said, If not, please break. Please let my brother Amnon go with us. And the king said to him, Why should he be with you? But Absalom urged him, so he let Amnon and all the king's sons go with him. Now Absalom had commanded his servants, saying, Watch now, when Amnon's heart is merry with wine, and when I say to you, Strike Amnon, then kill him. Do not be afraid. Have I not commanded you? Be courageous and valiant. So the servants of Absalom did to Amnon, and Absalom had, as Absalom had commanded. Then all the king's sons arose, and each one got on his mule and fled. And it came to pass while they were on the way that news came to David, saying, Absalom has killed the king's son, and not one of them is left. So the king arose and tore his garment and lay on the ground. And all his servants stood by their clothes torn. 
Then Jonadab, Jonadab, the son of Shemaiah, David's brother, answered and said, Let not my lord suppose they have killed all the young men, the king's sons, for only Amnon is dead. For by the command of Absalom, this has been determined from the day that he forced his sister Tamar. Now therefore, let not my lord the king take the things to heart, so think that all the king's sons are dead, for only Amnon is dead. Then Absalom fled, and the young man who was keeping watch lifted his eyes and looked, and there many people were coming from the road on the hillside. And Joab, Jonadab said to the king, Look, the king's sons are coming, as your servant said, so it is. So it was as soon as he had finished speaking that the king's sons indeed came, and they lifted up their voice and wept. Also the king and all his servants wept very bitterly. But Absalom fled and went to Talmai, the son of Amihu, king of Geshur. And David mourned for his son every day. So Absalom fled and went to Geshur and was there three years. And King David longed to go to Absalom, for he had been comforted concerning Amnon, because he was dead. Second Samuel chapter 14. So Joab the son of Zeruiah perceived the king's heart was con concerned about Absalom. And Joab sent to Tekoa and brought from there a wise woman and said to her, Please pretend to be a mourner and put on mourning apparel. Do not anoint yourself with oil, but act like a woman who has been mourning a long time for the dead. Go to the king and speak to him in this manner. So Joab put the words in her mouth. And when the woman Tekoa spoke to the king, she fell on her face to the ground and prostrated herself and said, Help, O king. Then the king said to her, What troubles you? And she said, Indeed, I am a widow. My husband is dead. Now your maidservant had two sons, and the two fought with each other in the field, and there was no one to part them. But the one struck the other and killed him. And now the whole family has risen up against your maidservant, and they said, Deliver him who struck his brother, that he may execute for for the life of his brother who he killed, and will destroy their, the heir also. So they would extinguish my ember that is left, and leave to my husband neither name nor remnant on the earth. Then the king said to the woman, Go to your house, and I will give orders concerning you. And the woman of Tekoa said to the king, My lord, O king, let the iniquity be on me, and on my father's house, and the king of his throne be guiltless. So the king said, Whoever says anything to you, bring him to me, and he shall not touch you any more. Then she said, please, please let the king remember the Lord your God, and do not permit the avenger of blood to destroy any more, lest they destroy my son. And he said, As the Lord lives, no one, not one hair of your son shall fall to the ground. Therefore the woman said, Please let your maidservant speak another word to my lord the king. And he said, Say on. So the woman said, Why then have you schemed such a thing against the people of God? For the king speaks this thing as one who is guilty. Is that the king does not bring his banished one home again? For he will surely die and become like water spilled on the ground, which cannot be gathered up again. Yet God does not take away your life, but he devises means so that his banished ones are not expelled from him. Now, therefore, I have come to speak of this thing to my Lord, the king, because the people have made me afraid. 
And your maidservant said, I will now speak to the king, and it may be that the king will perform the request of his maidservant. For the king will hear and deliver his maidservant from the hand of the man who will destroy me and my son together from the inheritance of God. Your maidservant said, the word of my lord the king will now be comforting. For as the angel of God, so is my lord the king in discerning good and evil. And may the Lord, your God, be with you. Then the king answered and said to the woman, Please do not hide from me anything that I ask you. And the woman said, Please let my lord, the king, speak. So the king said, Is the hand of Joab with you in all this? And the woman answered and said, As you live, my lord king, no one can turn you to the right hand or the left hand anything that my lord, the king, has spoken. For your servant Joab commanded me. He put all these words in the mouth of your maidservant. To bring about this change of affairs, your servant Joab has done this thing. But my Lord is wise, according to the wisdom of the angel of God, to know everything that is in the earth. And the king said to Joab, All right, I have granted this thing, therefore, Bring back the son, the young man, Absalom. Then Joab fell to the ground on his face and bowed himself and thanked the king. As Joab has said, today your servant knows that you have found favor, that I have found favor in your sight. My lord, O king, in that the king has fulfilled the request of his servant. So Joab arose and went to Geshur. And brought Absalom to Jerusalem. And the king said, let him return to his own house. But do not let him see my face. So Absalom returned to his own house, but did not see the king's face. Now in all Israel, there was no one who praised as much as Absalom for his good looks. For the sole of his foot to the crown of his head, there was no blemish on him. And when he cut the hair of his beard, of his head, at the end of every year, he cut it because it was heavy on him. When he cut it, he weighed the hair on his head at 200 shekels, according to the king's standard. To Absalom were born three sons and one daughter whose name was Tamar. She was a woman of beautiful appearance. And Absalom dwelt two full years in Jerusalem, but did not see the king's face. Therefore, Absalom sent to Joab to send him to the king, but he would not come to him. And when he sent again the second time, he would not come. So he said to his servant, see Joab's field is near mine. And he has barley there. Go and set it on fire. And Absalom's Servants set the field on fire. Then Joab arose and came to Absalom's house and said to him, Why have your servants set my field on fire? And Absalom answered Joab, Look, I sent you saying, Come here so that I may send you to the king to say, Why have I come from Geshur? It would be better for me to be there still. Now, therefore, let me see the king's face. But if there is iniquity in me, let him execute me. So Joab went to the king and, and told him. And when he had called for Absalom, he came to the king and bowed himself on his face to the ground before the king. Then the king kissed Absalom. Two Samuel chapter 15. After this, it happened that Absalom provided himself with chariots and horses and 50 men to run before him. Now Absalom would arise, would rise early and stand beside the way of the gate. So it was when, whenever anyone who had 
a lawsuit, came to the king for a decision, that Absalom would call him to him and say, what city are you from? And he would say, your servant is from such and such a tribe of Israel. Then Absalom would, would say to him, look, your case is good and right, but there is no deputy of, of the king to hear you. Moreover, Absalom would say, oh, that I were made judge in the land and everyone who has any suit or any course will come to me that I may that I would give him justice. And so it was. Whenever anyone near it came near to bow down to him, that he would put out his hand and take him and kiss him. In this manner, Absalom acted toward all Israel who came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. And now it came to pass. After 40 years, that Absalom said to the king, Please let me go to Hebron and pay the vow which I made to the Lord. For your servant took a vow while I dwell, dwelt at Geshur in Syria, saying, If the Lord indeed brings me back to Jerusalem, then I will serve the Lord. And the king said to him, Go in peace. So he arose and went to Hebron. Then Absalom sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, as soon as you hear the sound of the trumpet, then they shall say, Absalom reigns in Hebron. And with Absalom went 200 men invited from Jerusalem. And they went along in, in, innocently and did not know anything. Then Absalom sent for Ahithophel, the Gilonite, David's counselor from his city, from Gil Gilo, Gilo, while he offered sacrifices. And the conspiracy grew, for the people with Absalom continued to increase in number. Now a messenger came to David, saying, The hearts of the men of Israel are with Absalom. So David said to all his servants who were with him in Jerusalem, Arise and let us flee, or we may not escape the Absalom. Make haste to depart lest he overtake us suddenly and bring disaster upon us and strike the city with the edge of the sword. And the king's servants said to the king, We are your servants, ready to do whatever my lord king commands. Then the king went out with all his household after him. But the king left ten women, concubines, to keep the house. And the king went out with all his people after him and stopped at the outskirts. Then all his servants passed before him and all the Cherethites and the Palathites and all the Gittites, Gittites, 600 men who followed him from Gath, passed before the king. Then the king said to Ittai the Hittite, Why are you also going with us? Return and remain with the king, for you are a foreigner and I, and also an exile from your own place. In fact, you came only yesterday. Should I make you wander up and down with us today? So I go, since I go, I know not where. Return to your brethren back. Mercy and truth be with you. But Ittai answered the king and said, As the Lord lives, as my lord the king lives, surely in whatever place my lord the king shall be, whether in death or in life, even there also your servant will be. So David said to Ittai, go and cross over. Then Ittai the Gittite and all his men and all the little ones who were with him crossed over. And all the country wept with a loud voice and all the people crossed over. The king himself also crossed over to, to Brook Kidron. And all the people crossed over toward the way of the wilderness. 
There was Zakak also, and all the Levites with him, bearing the Ark of the Covenant of God. And they set down the Ark of God, and Abith Abiathar went up until all the people had finished crossing over the, the city. Then the king said to Zerak, Carry the ark of God back into the city. If I bring me, if I find favor in your eyes of the Lord, in the eyes of the Lord, he will bring me back and show me both it and his dwelling. But if he says thus, I have no delight in you, here I am, let him do to me as it seems good to him. And the Lord, and, and the king also said to Zadok the priest, Are you not a seer? Return to the city in peace, and your two sons with you. Ahimaaz, your son, and Jonathan, the son of Ab Abiathar. See, I will wait in the plains in the wilderness until word comes from me to inform me. Therefore, Zadok and Abiathar carried the ark of God back to Jerusalem, and they remained there. So David went up by the ascent of the Mount of Olives and wept as he went up, and he had his head covered and went barefoot and all the people who were with him covered their heads and went up weeping as they went up then someone told David saying Ahithophel is among the, conspir the conspirators with Absalom so David said oh Lord I pray turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness Now it happened when David had come to the top of the mountain where the worship where he worshiped God, there was Hushai the Ar the archite coming to meet him with his robe torn and, and dust on his head. David said to him, If you go on with me, you will become a burden to me. But if you return to the city and say to Absalom, I will be your servant, O king, and I was your father as I was your father's servant previously. So I will now be your servant, and then you may defeat the council of Ahithophel for me. And do you not have Zadok and Abiathar the priests with you there? Therefore, it will be that whatever you hear from the king's house, you shall tell Zadok and Abiathar the priests. Indeed, they have they have there with them two sons, Ahimaaz. Ahimaeus, Zadok's son, and Jonathan, Abiathar's son. And by them you shall tell me everything you hear. So Hushai, David's friend, went into the city, and Absalom came into Jerusalem. To Samuel 16. When David was a little past the top of the mountain, there was Ziba, the servant of Mephibosheth, who met him a couple of saddled donkeys, and on them 200 loaves of bread, 100 clusters of raisins, 100 summer fruits, and a skin of wine. And the king said to Ziba, What do you mean to do this, to do with these? So Ziba said, The donkeys are for the king's household to ride on, the bread of and summer fruit for the young men to eat, and the wine for those who are faint in the wilderness to drink. Then the king said, And where is your master's son? And Ziba said to the king, Indeed, he is staying in Jerusalem, for he said, Today the house of Israel will restore the kingdom of my, father's, of my father to me. So the king of Ziba, Here are hear all that belongs to Mephisha that is yours. And Ziba said, I humbly bowed before you that I may find favor in your sight, my Lord, O King. Now when King David came to Bahurim, there was a man from the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimei, Shimei the son of Gera, coming from there. He came out cursing continuously as he came, and he threw stones at David and all the, at all the servants of the King David, 
and all the people and all the mighty men there on his right hand and on his left. And Shimei said thus when he cursed, Come out, come out, you bloodthirsty man, you rogue. The Lord has brought upon you all the blood of the house of Saul, in whose place you have reigned. And the Lord has delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom, your son. So you are now, so you, so now you are caught in your own evil because you are bloodthirsty men. Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, said to the king, Why should this dead dog curse me, Lord King? Please let me go over and take off his head. But the king said, Whatever I do with you, your sons of, of Zeruiah, so let him curse, because the Lord has said to him, Curse David, who then shall say, Why have you done so? And David said to Abishai and all his servants, So how, see how my son, who came from my own body, seeks my life. How much more now may this Benjamite? Let him alone and let him curse, for so the Lord has ordered him. It may be that the Lord will look on my affliction and that the Lord will repay me with good for his cursing this day. And David and his men went along the road. Shimei went along the hill opposite to him and cursed as he went, threw stones at him and kicked up dust. Now the king and all the people who were with him became weary, so they refreshed themselves there. Meanwhile, Ab Absalom and all the people, the men of Israel, came to Jerusalem, and Ahithophel was with him. And, he, and so it was when Hushai and the archite, David's friend, came to Absalom, that Hushai said to Absalom, Long live the king, long live the king. And Absalom said to Hushai, Is this your loyalty to your friend? Why did you go? Not go with your friend. Who shall I say to Absalom? No, but whom the Lord and his people and all the men of Israel cho choose, his I will be, and with him I will remain. Furthermore, who should I serve? Should I not serve in the presence of his son? As I have served in your father's presence, so will I be in your presence. Then Absalom said to Ahithophel, Give advice as to what we should do. And Ahithophel said to Absalom, Go into your father's concubines, whom he has left to keep the house, and all Israel will hear that you are that you are aboard by your father. Then the hands of all who are with you will be strong. So Israel pitched the tent. So they pitched a tent for Absalom on the top of the hill. And Absalom went into the house, into his father's concubines, inside of Israel. Now, the advice of Ahithophel, which he gave in those days, was as if one inquired at an oracle of God. So was the advice of Ahithophel, both with David and with Absalom. Second Samuel, chapter 17. Moreover, moreover, Ahithophel said to Absalom, now let me choose 12,000 men, and I will arise and pursue David tonight, and I will come upon him. He is weary and weak, and make him afraid, and all the people who are with him will flee, and I will strike only the king. Then I will bring back all the people to you, and when, when all the return except the man whom you seek, all the people will be at peace. And the same pleased Absalom and the elders of Israel. Then Absalom said, Now call Hushai the archite also, and let us hear what he says too. And when Hushai came to Absalom, Absalom spoke to him, saying, Ahithophel has spoken in this manner. Shall we do as he says, if not speak up? So Hushai said to, to Absalom, The advice is, 
The advice that Ahithophel has given is not good at this time. For Hushai, you know your father and his men, and they are mighty men. And they are enraged in their minds, like a bear robbed of her cubs in the field. And your father is a man of war and will not camp with the people. Surely now he is hidden in some pit or in some other place. And it will be when someone, uh, when some of them overthrow at first that whoever hears it will say, there is a daughter of among the people who follow Absalom. There is a slaughter among the people who follow Absalom. And even he who is a servant whose heart is like the heart of a lion will melt completely. For all Israel knows that your father is a mighty man and who are with him are valiant. Therefore I advise that all Israel be fully gathered to you from Dan to Beersheba like the sand by the sea of the great multitude and that you go to battle with in person. So we will come upon him in some place where he might be found and we will fall on him as the dew falls on the ground. And of him, all the men who are scared of him shall not be left so much one. Moreover, if he has withdrawn into a city and then Israel shall bring ropes to the city and we will put, put it into the river, then there is no one No phone found there. And Absalom and all the men of Israel said, The advice of Hushai the archite is better than the advice of Ahithophel. For the Lord has purposed to defeat the good advice of Ahithophel so, to the intent that the Lord might bring disaster on Absalom. Then Hushai said to Zadok and Abiathar the priest, Thus says the thus and so Ahithopel advised Absalom the elders of Israel, and thus so I have advised. Now therefore sent quickly and tell David, saying, Do not spend this night in the plains of the wilderness, but speedily cross over, lest the king and all the people who are with him be swallowed up. Now Jonathan and, uh, and Abi Ahimaaz stayed at En Rogel. For they dared not se seen, be seen coming into the city. So a female servant will come and tell them, and they will go and tell David. Nevertheless, the lad saw them and told Absalom. But both of the, them went away quickly and came to a man's house in Berhurim, so, who had a well in his court. And they went down into it. Then the woman took and spread a covering over the well's mouth and spread ground grain on it. And the thing was not known. When Absalom's servants came to the woman at the house, they said, Where is Ahimaaz and Jonathan? So the woman said to them, They have gone over the water brook. And when they had searched and could not find them, they returned to Jerusalem. And it came to pass after they had departed that they came up out of the well and went and told King David and said to David, Arise, cross over the water quickly. For thus has Ahithophel advice against you. So David and all the people who were with him arose and crossed over the Jordan. But the morning light by the morning light, not one of them was left on who had not gone over the Jordan. Now when Ahithophel saw that his advice was not followed, he saddled the donkey and arose and went into the uh, home to his house, to his city. Then he put his household in order and hanged himself and died. He was buried in his father's tomb. <clears throat> Then David went to Mahanaim, and Absalom crossed over the Jordan 
and he and all the men and men of Israel with him. And Absalom made Amasa captain of the army instead of Joab. This Amasa was the son of a man whose name was Jithra, an Israelite, who had gone into Abigail, the daughter of Nahash, the sister of Neriah, Joab's mother. So Israel and Absalom encamped in, this, in the land of Gilead. Mm -hmm. Now it happened when David had come to Mahanaim that Shobi, the son of Nahash the, from Rabbah and the people of Ammon, Makir, the son of Amiel from Lodabar, and Barzillai, Barzillai the Gileadite from Rogelum, brought beds and basins, earthen vessels and of wheat, barley and flour, and parched grain and beans, lentils and parched seeds, honey and curds, sheep and cheese of the herd, for David and the people who were with him to eat. For they said, the people are hungry and weary and thirsty in the wilderness. 2 Samuel chapter 18. And David numbered the people who were with him and set captains of thousands of and captains of hundreds over them. Then David sent out a third of the people under the hand of Joab, one third under the hand of Abishai, and one and the son of Zuriah, Joab's brother, and one third under the hand of Etai, the Gittite. And the king said to the people, I also will surely go out with you myself. But the people answered, You shall not go out, for if we flee away, they will not care about us, nor if half of us die. Will they not care about us? Nor if half of us die, will they care about us? But you are worth 10,000 of us now. For if you are now more help to us in the city. Then the king said to them, Whatever seems best to you, I will do. So the king stood beside the gate, and all the people went out by the hundreds and the thousands, now the king had commanded Joab, Abishai, and Etai, saying, Deal gently for my sake with the young man Absalom. And all the people heard the king gave, gave all the captain's orders concerning Absalom. So the people went out into the field to battle against Israel. The battle was in the woods of Ephraim. And the, bat and the people of Israel were overthrown there before the servants of David. And a greater slaughter of 20,000 took place. Took place there that day. For the battle there was scattered over the face of the whole countryside. And the woods devoured more people that day than the sword devoured. Then Absalom met the servants of David. Absalom rode on a mule. The mule went under the thick burrows of a great tabernacle tree, and his head caught in the tabernacle tree. So he was left hanging between heaven and earth, and the mule which was under him went on. Now a certain man saw it and told Joab and said, I just saw Absalom hanging in a tabernacle tree. So Joab said to the man who told him, just say, you just saw him. And why did you not strike him there to the ground? I would have given you 10 shekels of silver and a belt. But the man said to Joab, though I were to receive a thousand shekels of silver in my hand, I would not raise my hand against the king's son for his for is our hearing the king command you to and Abishai to and Ittai, saying, Beware lest anyone touch the young man Absalom. Otherwise, I will have dwelt falsely against my own life. For there is nothing hidden from the king, and for and you yourself would have set yourself against me. Then Joab said, I cannot linger with you. 
and he took three spears in his hand and thrust them through Absalom's heart while he was still alive in the midst of the tabernacle tree. Then, and ten young men who bore Joab's armor surrounded Absalom and struck and killed him. So Joab blew the trumpet, and the people returned from pursuing Israel, for Joab held back the people. And they took Absalom and cast him into a large pit in the woods. And they laid a very large heap of stones over him. Then all Israel fled, everyone to his tent. Now Absalom in his lifetime had taken and set up a pillar by him for himself, which is the king's valley. For he said, I will have no son to keep my name in remembrance. He called the pillar after his own name. And to this day, it is called Absalom's Monument. <laughs> Thank you, Father, for allowing me to read the word. Let us think deep. Let us remind us that there was turmoil all during the time of David, that people were up against each other, that, that the nation was divided. Father, help us understand that man is flawed. And the Bible teaches us that there will be turmoil between men until Jesus, until the Messiah saves us from this and restores peace. Father, we thank you for everything you give us. We thank you for allowing us to be a part of this in the morning. And we ask you, Father, to let these words touch the hearts that need to be touched, change the minds that need to be changed. And lead people to salvation through you, through our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father. We raise you up, we lift you up, and we praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.